Last time on the Incorrigible Party. Surviving Isabella's attack at the Tickly Servant. The party gives chase, but loses her in the streets of Drukal. Unsure if this is truly Isabella, or perhaps Sardo in disguise, the party uses magical means to attempt to locate their adversary with little success. Shakara seeks further refuge in the abilities granted to her by the Coven, enough to trigger a physical change, robbing her of her draconic features and instilling in her a new form of heritage. And now, back to the adventure. Seeing that the party has reunited once again in the Tickly, uh, Sally will come over to the four of you. Uh, sorry, the four plus, uh, what did you call them? HMD? The four of you plus HMD? Yes. <laughs> also Mullen and Drake. And, and, you know, she, she's, I, like I had mentioned before, she's kind of barking orders to, to get, you know, the cleanup going. And uh, so she's just kind of almost like she's on a, a bit of a warpath, right? She's really, seems like she's just immediately able to take charge. And clearly she's promoted to her position for a reason, right? Who in the Nine Hells was that? That was a problem that I took care of. You took care of the person running away after they fireball my tavern? Oh, that person. Yeah, it's one of Sammy's friends. I don't know if you want to really piss her off. Isabella Good's her name. You've probably heard of her. That was Isabella Good attacking Paladins of Cultus? Eh, it that looked like it. was a person that looked like Isabella, at least. Yeah, let's... Come here. Like, on the down low, we're not sure that it's her, okay? Like, it could be someone impersonating her. Are my soldiers at risk? What were they here for? Well, that's what doesn't really add up. I think it's these guys. Uh, these guys. Yeah, hold on a second. I don't... I don't... We can't lay the blame on us. No, I mean, for real, though. Like, they're here for you. If it is what we think it is, right? Eh, it's a possibility, yeah. Somebody gonna stop speaking in circles and fill me in? We're really good at speaking in circles. There is a revenant that seeks Shaft and Falzerin. We thought perhaps they would be coming here. That was part of the problem I mentioned earlier and the other person that I took care of earlier. So you're telling me that knowing a creature that seems to be pretty powerful was hunting you, you sought refuge in a crowded tavern. No, we thought we had time to go after them elsewhere. Yeah, that was the plan. We didn't know they were so close until... When did we find out? Uh... Right before I killed Igna? Yeah. Today. Come on. And Igna's the scrawny one? Was, yes. Was, of course. She kind of speaks up so everyone around can hear. This place is on lockdown now. The Tickly's closed for business. The four of you are welcome to continue staying here. We're both working for Samuel. If you need additional protection, we can offer it here. Uh, I mean, uh, hopefully... Yeah, not a bad idea. Maybe put a few more paladins around the place. We'll definitely be posting some sentries around the building itself. I don't know. Are we sure we want to stay here? What if we bring more destruction? Do you have a better alternative? No, I just I feel bad that there wasn't more I could do. I just look around at how everything's like drenched and dripping from my sleet storm. Well, I think now that Corporal Sally knows the the danger that could possibly be, she'll she'll take care of things, right? Right, Sally? Yes, we'll take care of the cleanup, and like I say, we're we're going to have to use this place as our own tower, for lack of a better term. Mia, if, if it wasn't for you, this the whole building wouldn't have gone up, so thank you for your efforts. You're welcome. So I think the plan is we're going to go figure out how to take care of this problem ourselves, and, you know, remove you from the situation if we can. We just need to discuss our next move. I have to inform Samuel of this and potential attack from Isabella Good. Understood. I walk up the steps back to the room. Off we go. Okay, let's go into the room where all Falzerin's stuff was was held. Mm -hmm. 
Files are in check and make sure everything's okay. I sort of go over and look out the window, see if I see anything out in the crowd or, you know, sort of concerned that, you know, anything can hit us at any time. A little bit paranoid. I'm I'm in bad shape. That that was a powerful powerful spell. We need to uh, maybe set a watch, set some traps, I don't know. I I could use a, a bit of time to regain my strength. Just take a seat. Take a seat and if if we don't get a full rest, I'll give you some healing. Just start resting now. So we have no way of tracking Sardos. Well, he'll be back. Yeah, I know, but he's going to show up at the worst possible time. Can we even go to the theater knowing he could show up? I don't see what other choice we have. If Mia and I leave you two alone, and he tracks you down, would you be able to defend yourselves or get away? Well, we'll be close by. We'll be right outside. If things go down, I mean, you'll hear Frostman scream. Well, I... (laughs) I don't know. It's a bit risky, but I, I think we can manage. Just have to be careful. I mean, if we get this aim, we can get the hell out of Drew Call and, and worry about him later. If he gives us that chance, yes. That's right. Yeah, you deal with Salardos now, you deal with him later. He's coming for you. I mean, you two tracked back and he's obviously gone in some way, right? You didn't see where he went. He, he sure did do a good job of, well, if, if that was Salardo and not Izzy, did a good job of disappearing quickly. Well, here, okay, let's try to piece this together. So Izzy heads this way, that way, right? So I, like, try to aim down the street. What's down there? What would be that direction? There's all kinds of stuff down that way. Well, yeah, there's all, all sorts of, you know various little shops and and people's houses but that is yeah it it almost seemed like we were at one point getting close if if alomar's reaction can be any indication it seemed like the sensation he's experiencing was getting more and more intense and then it sort of went away well if your theory is true then we have alomar with us not necessarily by choice sorry alomar but if uh, he starts feeling any kind of pain, he ought to be squealing a little bit. We'll go invisible and, and go in and let them know. That, that's that's a very good point. We sort of have our own alarm system. Right. A salar dose detector. Right. Okay, well, I, I just didn't know if it was something, you know, like, um, I don't know, it's weird. Like, magic, 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 and, and, and Sardos, and I don't know. Now, uh, Leland, actually, could we could we make some sort of check to see sort of if if we would have been able to pinpoint um, like buildings or or something that would have been kind of in the general vicinity when we thought that to sort of line up, you know, when Alamar was experiencing this this sensation a lot, and then when it went away, give us a, sort of narrow down the area. To uh, falls on a shaft, go ahead and make me a, a history check, I suppose. To recall, as you know, a lot of things were happening at the at once, and you're dealing with Alamar screaming and. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Twenty for Shaft. Uh, Thirteen for Falzerin. Uh The area itself is fairly nondescript, um, but basically in relation to the landmarks in which you were traveling between Tickly and Magic, Magic, Magic itself, uh, you were you were f- much closer to the Tickly Servant, like you were only a few hundred feet away from the Tickly before uh, Alamar, you know, you, you flew in the west, which is the direction you were heading, before Alamar started to feel fine, like he wasn't in pain anymore and he didn't feel any effect on the cane. So you weren't too far into, you know, the direction that you're, that you're heading kind of thing, right? As it was only a few minutes after the, the you know, uh, Isabella fireballed the, the inn and uh, so, somebody on foot couldn't have gotten that far, right? Okay. So mm-hmm. we didn't actually travel all that far before whatever, wherever they went, um, they disappeared or, or somehow went out of range. And Isabella was on foot, left the building on foot. She did, yes. And in, in addition, um, in addition to kind of remembering where where exactly you were in the street. 
I'll roll into that check where you were when Alamar first started complaining about feeling the pull on the cane. And again, you, you were not very far from the tickly. Like you were a hundred feet from the tickly. You had just set off right from that from that street hmm. that turned okay. left down into the straightaway to to head uh, westward towards Magic, Magic, Magic. So not a whole lot of ability to kind of narrow down any any clues as to where they may have headed or where they may have ended up. Hmm. No, but you remember, you certainly remember well enough to revisit that location and try to look for something there if that was a course of action that you wanted. Like, you could easily find that that area again, especially with Shaft's, Shaft's 20 and uh, or whatever he rolled, the 20-something and, the, and his knowledge of the city as well. Okay. I mean, we can go check out the area one more time. We've got a little bit of time before the play starts. I can sense, I can sense if he's around. I'm worried about Falzer and he needs to rest. There must be some kind of portal in one of those buildings. That's what I was thinking, but I remember, again, you said there was no portal here. And if it was a portal, it could be Isabella. Well, the other variable that we don't know is, is what the range is for Alamar to feel this sensation. It, it's possible that we were going one direction and they changed direction and forked off another way and we just went out of range. I would not put it past Isabella to keep portals hidden from me. Alright, so let's assume there's a portal. Do we really think it's Izzy? It does not make sense, but none of it does. It seems like a very unusual thing for Isabella to do. Why would, from what we understand recently, it, Isabella has is, got problems with Shakara. Why wouldn't, you know, that fireball was nowhere near Shakara. Exactly. add up to me. All right, so the plan is for us girls to go to the theater... And you guys are going where? We'll be close by. Close by. Now, when we Outside. when or if we see this amulet, like, what's the plan? Like, well, once you verify that it's there, when the show's over, we'll go invisible and follow her back to wherever she's going. Find out where she puts the amulet because we think she keeps it there at the theater somehow. Right. And then Falzer and I'll snatch it. I really hope that they lead us back to where they keep it. Yeah. Me too. Uh, if it comes down to us having to take it off her in the theater, you guys would back us up, right? Of course. Well, um, of course, absolutely. And our agreement still stands, Falzern. You're going to cast Mage Armor on me? Yes, yes, of course. Does Hannah travel with guards? Would I know if Hannah travels around? Do I, does she typically have... Yeah, I don't think uh, Shaft or Mia, you've, you've never not seen Hannah with some type of entourage. Yeah, I mean, of course she does. Even if you don't see them, they're there. It would not be easy to take the amulet from her, then, by force. Not directly. I uh, don't think so, but I mean, desperate times, what other choice do we have? I sit down on the bed, take off my boots, sort of lay back, put my hands behind my head. Oh, well, we got a couple hours. Let's get uh, some shut eye here, and then you girls can uh, get dressed, and we'll do this thing. I wonder if my dress will even still fit. That's a good question. Um, yeah. So, I, if if possible, Falzern would like to start a short rest, Leland. Okay. Anybody that wants to. Well, short rest does uh, nothing for me, so that's fun. Short rest will get me back to max HP. I wish I regained spell slots on rest. I mean, that would be too OP, probably. You don't? No. <laughs> clerics don't, but clerics get, I believe, they get their channel divinity back. Yeah, but I didn't channel, so. <laughs> Joke's on me. You're all going to be able to benefit from your short rest. Other than the sounds of the, the paladins down below in the tavern, doesn't seem like anything uh, else is out of, out of place or, or, you know, I, I'm sure... Nothing strange down in nothing strange down in the streets are going on. Uh, things seem to have pretty well just calmed right down. But it, again, uh, you, you hear kind of the odd like knocking or like banging on the door, um, not of your room, but of the 
front door of the Tickly itself. You know, other people trying to get in, coming for a drink, but it has uh, appears to have been locked and closed, as Sally had said. They're not letting anybody anybody in at all. Okay. So we're basically going to stay here until it's time to go to the show. Is that that's it, right? Right. Safest place. I think we should lay low. Yeah. Why don't um, Emily? Why don't you roll me a, a D100, please? I don't like D100s. Well, Can't it's not trust weather. Them. Yeah, it's not weather. <laughs> a nine and a double zero be ninety. Okay. Well, it depends on the order. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> and uh, I'll take one from Bill, too. Uh, 17. Okay, I like it. It's a good number. The sun begins to set, night falls, and again, the, the next few hours seem to go uninterrupted. The, the noises from the tickly again have quieted down. Now kind of looking out of the window, you do clearly see uh, like a paladin, basically guard posted up outside the front door. And uh, a few more always seem to be lingering, you know, walking up and down the street here. It doesn't look like there's anything less than four or five paladins with even just within your your uh, narrowed scope from, from your window here of your room uh, out in the street itself. Mia and Shakara, have you donned your your uh, your evening gowns? Yes. I have to. Doffed and donned. Okay, so no armor, obviously. Uh, what are you doing with your weapons? Are you giving them to Falzrin? Hiding them up my skirt. <laughs> I will give the Death Knight's dread sword to Falzrin, and my other weapons I'll leave in the room. All right. Mia, doing the same with with your hammer. Yeah, I guess. Can the boys carry my hammer? You could put it in uh, Falzerin's uh, bag of holding. Ooh, that seems dangerous. <laughs> I would also say if Falzerin would like to re-empty the bag, or perhaps he already has emptied it again, I, I'm not sure if that's Falzerin would do that. Yeah, I think he has to. He has to be prepared. I mean, I was thinking about this. So, I mean, I guess on the spot, if a fight were to break out and we were to defeat Salardo, he could, like empty out the bag right then and there and and perform the thing but then he's got a whole bunch of stuff on the ground what does he do with it so i don't know i I don't think that's really feasible but what about my hammer i think he's gonna have to leave everything behind that he wouldn't be able to carry without the bag yeah there's a pal there's paladins all around this place you can only hold my hammer if you're worthy so i feel like i just have to drop it right into the bag good luck getting it out (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, I I hope you're not too attached to it. Because <laughs> it may be lost forever. I So I was going to say then, since you have done that, Falzrin, I would say that Mia's shield could also be kind of wedged into your bag as well if you wanted to bring that to the theater as well. If you're worthy. Well, again, yeah, like, I'll only put in there what I would be able to to carry if I destroy this bag. So, I mean, I guess, yeah, like it, I could give them to Mia. We'd be with Mia, presumably when we fight the Revenant. Hopefully. So. Hopefully. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to, I I guess I choose to trust Falzerin with my shield and my hammer. And that seems crazy, but here you go, Falzy. I, I hold him out. Yeah, I will, I will take utmost precaution to to ensure that you get these back the same condition that you gave them to me as i hold them out and in falls are just as he touches them he gets a little static shock like when you touch oh, the metal oh. yeah oh my oh sorry forgot i forgot that they're uh imbued with the lightning of course yes yes i i appreciate the value that they have to you i'll take good care of them and for placing my trust, and I stand and like hold out my arms and close my eyes, like, give me mage armor. Uh, I, I think. <laughs> did, did you have a scroll you were going to give me, Mia? Oh right. Um, all this stuff. Guess I'm not bringing these scrolls with me. Shoot. Here. Okay. So Falzerin sort of unrolls the scroll, easily recognizes um, the spell that's written there, and spends a moment to speak the words and make the motions to to cast mage armor on Mia. 
Okay, what does that make your AC, Mia? Well, what is it in address? Ten, ten plus your dex. Uh, twelve. And then Mage Armor's plus three, right? Thirteen plus your dexterity? So it's fifteen. Do you have another one of those? I don't have a scroll, no. I I certainly can can cast it on you, Shakara. I would appreciate it. Okay, so Falzer and Will also cast Mage Armor on Shakara. So 13 plus your dexterity modifier. I guess for Falzer and it's always just been 13 because he has no dex. I'm going to say to you two, hey, when you go in, uh, and I sort of point at my circle of mm. the wise and go, maybe uh, consider using that if it doesn't put off too much light. We know she, we know she has some tricks up her sleeve. And I look over at Falzer and we don't need to give her any more information than we already have. That's true. Yes. If I had have known, I certainly would have used mine. Do they actually light up? They do, yes. Hmm. They only last for a minute, right? Yeah. It does, yes. It's kind of obvious. Shikara, what does the Beige Armor make your AC? 15. Oh, okay. That's Hey, that's not too bad. That's pretty good for, for going in with no armor. I mean, it's it's no 20, but... I don't have weapons, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing, like, the main thing is I have to leave my scrolls, my hammer, my shield. I have a potion of invulnerability. I'm guessing I'm not bringing potions. Like, it's me and my spell slots. I do put my brooch of intimidation on my dress, though. Okay, yeah, oh, I'm definitely like wearing it. my circlet and my legendary actions uh, pendant. Just jewelry. Yeah, makes sense. So sure, yeah, yeah. Mia, I, I hate to bother you, but I'm still pretty worn out from that's that bout with Isabella or whoever that was. Is it, is it possible you could heal me a bit? So Mia looks falls up and down and just kind of like <sighs> sighs and goes up to him and touches his his shoulder reluctantly. And uh, falls and gets 10 hit points from my healing hands that I get once per long rest. Oh, thank you, Mia. That I really appreciate it. Okay, we get in trouble. You just, just give me a shout. Will that do for now? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Are you ready to set off? Before we go, Sparky, come to me. <gasps> you still have Sparky. That's what I was waiting to see. I want to make sure I should, but I wanted to make sure. So he does appear. You, you, Sparky does appear, but you do see a Sparky is changed uh, a little bit too. He himself is also less scaly and, and almost like more more colorful. It's a salamander now. <laughs> no, he still has wings. He can still fly. Sparky, you look lovely. Sparky flits over to you. Uh, you know, before when you had first changed, right, he was he was hesitant, just ever slightly making sure it was you. Uh, even though you're both both different, it seems that this time he doesn't uh, doesn't show any any signs of not recognizing you, or he just looks as, as happy to see you as he usually does. We are going incognito tonight. I need you to watch my back without being obvious and without coming near me. Okay. And I'll scritch him under his chin. He gives his tail a little flick back and forth. Uh, Shikara, how is someone not going to notice a flying little scaleless dragon thing? He is small. Okay. He can be more inconspicuous than you might think. All right. And Sparky will come get us if there is trouble. Yeah, I guess we need the help we can get. So Sparky will hang with us, and then if something goes wrong... Go in to warn you? Is that what you're saying? Either that or just fly around the theater and looking for anything that may cause us harm. All right. Do you want him with you? Whatever you want to do. It looks like it's... I look out the window again. It's getting to be theater time. Everybody ready? I am now. As ready as I'll ever be, I think. I go over and open the door. And it's off to the theater. And I Shaft. sort of hold my <laughs> hand out. Does this color lipstick look okay? <laughs> eh, I would have went with something a little darker, but, you know, teach their own. Okay. 
Thanks. Where'd you get lipstick? <laughs> I borrowed it from I think Jelly. It looks great, Mia. Thanks, Falzerin. <laughs> I just like feel. I feel like I must look like a crossfitter in this dress, right? Like Shikara too. Like she's got yeah. those shoulders, <laughs> like a gymnast. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Well, I mean, I don't know what your dresses look like or how much skin they absolutely show, but yeah, um, clearly both of your, your athletic builds are, are <laughs> I mean, saying on display seems gross, but I mean, they're on display. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Glutes for days. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you start the, the, the walk uh, north to Hannah's district and to the Arknall Theater. Uh, which which does take you the better part of an hour, right? Um, uh, maybe a little more, actually, considering how large the city is. Is you're you're going just below the center line of the city to the very to the very northern section of it, almost. And I would think Falzer and I would stay back about 30, 40 feet, and not look like we're with them. So okay, if anybody happens to see, they won't know us as a group. Sure, I like it. I like it. And uh, Sparky uh, immediately following Shikara's instructions will take off up into the air. Uh, kind of disappearing above where you know the the street torches uh, kind of illuminate right staying into into the shadows uh, even even like past uh, anyone that has only 60 feet for their dark vision would he's, he's past that and up up into the up into the dark hey Falzerin, did uh, was syndicate Zanzibar was he supposed to be at the front door I, I can't recall you know I don't know that we were told exactly I, I... I sort of assumed that he would be going to and from, and there's a good chance might be able to be seen at the front door. Did uh, Kepley describe him to us in any way that would we know who what Syndicate Zanzibar looks like? Uh, surrogate is his first name. Oh, sorry, Surrogate. And uh, he just described him as a, a dapper young dwarf. But he also mentioned that Surrogate w- has your descriptions. Okay. Well, if we spot him, maybe we can... Uh call him over and we can get some information but not be too obvious Shakara, when's the last time you saw a show i have never been to the theater are you kidding i grew up in a small village oh quite right. north of here oh you're gonna love it i mean i know there's a lot going on but it's supposed to be pretty good i used to love I going to the shows looking forward to it as much as possible yeah i feel pretty uncomfortable right now how about you i do feel like a lot is missing. Yeah, I almost feel like Thor is not here anymore. I don't get these cool tattoos like you. I, without my shield and hammer, what am I? You are still Mia. You are still a powerful woman. Yeah, tonight I'm Mia Brightwood. <laughs> I hated being toted around, but you know, the shows were good. And now you have much more to you. So do you. So it would seem. And also, less. Yeah, you did shrink a bit. I kind of crack a smile. <laughs> and I'll smile back at you. There are parts of me missing. I don't know how to describe it. Like your breath weapon? Yes. I mean, that's gotta be weird. And my snout! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, what's it like to have a nose? <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, I was gonna say, so like, when this version of Shakara smiles at you, it actually looks like a smile <laughs> rather than like a scowl. That's that's how I picture Dragonborn smiling. It's more of a <laughs> I still look unhappy. <laughs> we just walk in silence of like, wow, this lots happened. <laughs> yes. You you get about a, a mile from, from the tickly servant and from your bag falls her in. Falzerin! Just checking in to let you know I don't feel anything. (laughs) Alamar, you you nearly gave me a heart attack. Is that meant to be funny? That was brilliant. Well, when you trapped in a cane, you have to enjoy the little things. I just shake my head in silence. But I sort of mouth over to Falzerin. I can't wait till he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to confess something, Falzerin. I am a dead nervous. 
to get back my body. Yeah, how's that gonna work, by the way? Well, I told you all that I know already. Uh, I hope I won't have a problem taking control of it again. Uh, my soul back in its rightful place. Falzrin doesn't have to do anything, right? No, no, thank goodness, no. Other yes, than the yes. soul cage. Don't you worry, Alamar. I, I'm. I think I'm quite capable. Uh, I. I have been meaning to bring up the subject of what's going to happen after this. Now, I would hope, Alamar, that there can be a bit more of an understanding between us moving forward. I, I think we can be much better allies than enemies. I did not seek an enemy in you, Valzerin. Well, well, yes, yes, I know. I just, we've, I don't think it's a mystery that we've not seen eye to eye. And I, I don't know. I just. I started grabbing by the shoulder and then put my finger up to my mouth. That's cool. Thanks. Thanks, Alomar. I mean, I know we're all on the same page now. Well, we must be as... <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. At least in the short term, it seems. Yeah, it does seem that way. Okay, and uh, Shakara and Mia make it to the theater first. Uh, sorry, how? just how far back about were, were Shaft and Falzern following? 30 feet or so. Okay, so not too bad. Yeah, and uh, again, it, we're, we're rolling into to the evening now, to the late evening. And um, the streets are, are quite crowded, um, especially as you transition into into Hannah's district. Uh, I mean, you've been here at nighttime before, right? The previous the previous day you're here, but it was it was quite late at night uh, as the streets were starting to to kind of you know filter out and empty. But it's very clearly like the the nightlife here of Drukal is is just starting to kind of kick off, and uh, in particular, it seems um, very active up uh, in Hannah's district. In front of you, all four of you, the 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 Larknall Theater. It's uh, this this enormous building from the outside, by far the largest building on this street, even rivaling the Pussycat Palace. Uh, as um, Shaft would know, of course, uh, you know it it holds a few hundred people uh, at at full capacity. It's 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 quite large. But on, on the on the outside of it, um, you know where it kind of they have like the the coming attractions. You see something that immediately draws uh, your eye. There's a huge poster. This is probably like a like a four foot by eight foot poster up plastered up on the wall, of a familiar bard, pristine white feathers, the big name plastered across the top. Keck. This is a very flattering portrait of her. You know that that signature loot that you've you've seen smashed since this portrait was done or commissioned but just looks majestic and, and like it could play to the gods from this portrait. But stamped across in big red print, canceled. Oh, no. oh! what a tease. Next to it, uh, you see you see another like attraction poster and it just says at the top, loves dissolve. And it just kind of displays them like this uh, marble building with this balcony and the silhouette of a figure atop it uh, in the midst of, of what looks like a garden. And that seems to be the play that uh, is being held tonight. Look, Falzarin, it's your friend. Oh, goodness. I, I'm a bit relieved that, it's, that original headliner is canceled. Well, I think we... Uh, she might She might have been canceled herself based on what we saw. Yeah, well, I, I do hope not. I, I think there was a bit of misunderstanding between us. Mia, look. Whoa. Do you what do you suppose that means? Cancelled. Uh, nothing good. It would seem not. I hope she is all right. She tried to get you to kill Falzerin. That was a misunderstanding, a manipulation by Isabella. Isabella talked to Keck? Yes. What the heck, Keck? Ugh. And Izzy. Keck did not realize it was Isabella. Uh. She believed it was Dendar. She believed she was doing 
Dendar's will. Is there, uh, we're, as we're standing outside the, the front of the theater and people are shuffling in, do we happen to see uh, who we think might be surrogate Zanzibar at the door? No. Next to this uh, coming attraction displays, there uh, look like there's like a little like box office booth, you know, with a single attendant there. Um, this person is not a dwarf, though, so definitely not surrogate. And uh, you kind of uh, along the outside, you, you know, they have like, like uh, the velvet ropes in between the poles kind of designating uh, like to form a line, which actually does look empty. Basically, there's there's no one there. Just this this ticket keeper the, at the box office. Um, and, and that box office itself is set in front of like four uh, like glass double doors. And you can kind of see in into uh, the theater from the street. But again, from here, you don't see anybody that you would uh, would think is surrogate Zanzibar. Okay. Across the street from the theater, are there like um, any open taverns or something that we can sort of blend in, maybe get a drink, sit, sit outside kind of thing and look inconspicuous? Uh, yes, you absolutely can. I will I will say that um, maybe Falls are in Lesso, but Shaft probably just being in your armor in Hannah's district itself is setting you apart. But yeah, absolutely. You can definitely find what would be more a, a restaurant rather than a tavern uh, up here. So are there are there places out in front, like like you see in France with the little tables and stuff? Or is it oh, all inside? Oh, you want that terrace. You absolutely, yeah, you can absolutely find a place that uh, has a terrace. So there's a there's a few of them uh, on the street within eyesight of the front of the theater, absolutely. Shaft wants a croissant. <laughs> oh, wee oui, wee. Oui. No. <laughs> a, a baguette. A, a baguette, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'll sort of I'll go over Falls and I go, hey, that looks like a good place to keep watch up there over on... Want to want to grab a drink and some food and that's perfect, Shaft. I like your thinking. All right, let's go in here. Sort of push him into the door and walk into the restaurant, kind of thing to say where we you know we'd like to sit here. Absolutely, and again, you you're not it's you're still served, but obviously the person serving you, uh, or the person like admitting you, right? Kind of the concierge, kind of gives you an up and down and. We'll escort you to uh, to to a seat and you know take take a drink order and what, whatever else you want to order. My money's good here. What are you looking at? <laughs> yes, your five gold a drink does spend the same here as, as anyone else's does. Dear God, <laughs> my this place coming to. <laughs> I, I, I think I'll take a, a a soda water, please. <laughs> Before I walk up to the ticket booth person, I will look back to see where you guys go. Okay, I just want to give you a look, like. You know, point up at the at the place. I will discreetly nod right to you. There. I think if Mia saw them, she would know it's five gold pieces of beer and be like, ha, in her head. <laughs> Suckers. <laughs> Suckers. <laughs> so we will walk up to the ticket booth person. And they'll greet you. Uh, Keck, I have seen her show before and quite enjoyed it. Do you know what happened to her? Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't seem many people do. Uh, she was a, a real ticket seller, but hasn't hasn't been uh, available for you know a number of weeks. That is a shame. Well, I mean, uh, every great artist needs a break once in a while. I hope that is all it is. A two for tonight, please. Absolutely, that'll be uh, fifty gold pieces each, please. I will put out one hundred gold pieces. All right, he'll hand you two tickets. And I will pretend like that doesn't hurt. <laughs> the attendant will escort you to your seats. Mia really secretly, you know, doesn't say anything, but like hates that someone had to pay for her. Like, phew. anyway, you are indebted to me. <laughs> Freeloader. <laughs> I'm not getting any Dendar tattoos and crap. Right? <laughs> Keep that to yourself. You enter into it. Seems that. Like, um, you know, these doors kind of enter into almost uh, like like a holding area, and there's kind of more more of those velvet ropes in here. But again, there's there's doesn't seem there's there's anybody in this in this area. At a, another single huge set of, of doors, though, uh, on this this room, it's kind of like this intermediate area. Uh, you do see a a dwarf 
uh, dressed in what looks what would be the equivalent of like a, a tuxedo, right? Like he's got a, a, a fitted vest uh, over very very finely crafted. He just seems to be kind of standing there, um, kind of idly it seems. As again, there doesn't seem there's anybody for him to be attending to uh, currently in this room. But as soon as you you know step through one of those uh, double sets of glass doors, he kind of straightens up and will calmly uh, wave to each of you and. and basically meet you in the middle of this room uh kind of with the hand held out to to take your tickets hello 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 tickets please i'll hand them to him you will take them in and he he i mean he obviously he makes eye contact you with with you shakara but doesn't uh stay with you doesn't hold your gaze for very long but will kind of shift to mia and he'll take you through that large huge set of doors into this very wide open space with ceilings about 40 feet high, uh, marble flooring. There is seems to be a bar immediately to your left as you walk into this room. And uh, there's a huge uh, like 15 foot runner rug that leads all the way about 60 feet to a marble staircase, like a, a, a 25 foot wide elegant looking staircase. And uh, positioned roughly, you know, a third of the way in and then uh, a third of the way further up, uh, four 10-foot pillars that, you know, reach all the way up to the, to the, to the 40-foot uh, ceiling, hold, hold the roof above your head. And uh, there's a number of uh, very, like, kind of plush-looking uh, couches and, and seating here positioned in front of three different fireplaces in the various areas with the seating. And... This uh, attendant, well, yes, please. Uh, this way, I'll, I'll take you to your seat. And then he kind of, under his breath, you're you're Brightwood, right? You're Brightwood. I'm already leaning down to like hold his arm while he walks me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Mia. You're uh, you're Zanzibar. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's me. Wh- who's this? I I didn't get her description. This is Shakara. She's she's good. Don't worry. Where's where's the uh, where's where's the other small one? Kepley said I could I could trust Shaft. He's outside waiting because uh, Hannah doesn't know that we're you know adventuring together that we even know each other. So. And you see, he, he, he's you know starting to look fidgety, but he kind of straightens up again. Oh yes 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 yes, 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 yes. hilarious hilarious. Please, I fake please. laugh with him. <laughs> look, I, I I just wanted to make it look like I'm doing what I need to be doing. I don't want anybody to know that we're talking here. I'm gonna take you to your seats. And you're a little late, by the way. It's going to be very rude opening those doors in the middle of the play, but we're almost at, we're almost out of the intermission. I'll take you to your seats. Find me after. I can talk to you there when things are a little more lively and uh, I can slip away a little easier. Okay, after the play, where are we meeting? Intermission. Come back out here. I'll, I'll find you. Intermission. Okay. Shakar, intermission coming out here, okay? Got it. So you see, he actually doesn't take you up the uh, the large stairs. He actually kind of takes you around to the left. And you do see there is a, another door below it. Um, as, as at the top of the staircase, you can see another similar set of double doors that clearly leads to obviously a second story, right? Uh, but that's not, that's not where he takes you. But as he enters, uh, or sorry, as he opens this door, you enter this, this very large amphitheater. The, the the oval shape of uh, this space has tiered rows of seating that descend and end at, at a, kind of a sizable stage. Uh, and, and aside from the, the first, like the last two rows, sorry, the last two rows, uh, it seems that every seat is taken. And each person in attendance is dressed in, you know, like flowing gowns and, and prim, proper tuxedos, embroidered, you know, suit jackets. Again, everybody here is dressed as finely as the two of you are. 30 feet up, there seems to be six balconies that protrude into the space kind of above the seating around the, uh, you know, around the perimeter of, of the oval-shaped amphitheater. Kind of three on either side of the doors that you've you've entered in. These loge boxes, they're all full of, of people. In one of them sits Hannah. She's dressed in a, a deep red, high-collared, sleeveless dress. Her dark hair is put up, 
and, and there's kind of the, this ambient light in the theater um, from from kind of low set torches. They they've clearly had like covers put over them, but not enough to snuff them out, but still throw some light um, so you can navigate between the seats and etc. And uh, take away or, or sorry, still keep the focus though on the on the well lit stage. But that that light uh, is, is kind of it reflects off of like a, a jeweled gold tiara that she wears. It's encrusted with with diamond studs along the edges that that kind of you know along the edges of the of the headpiece, and you see that the the headpiece itself kind of flows up, and then down, two ridges along the top of her head that are they're shaped like cat ears. Around her neck, resting atop the middle of her sternum, hangs a gleaming golden amulet that that somehow outshines the diamonds even in the in the low light in its centered is a four-sided pyramid structure rising from a square base also made out of gold Anna's absent-mindedly you know kind of stroking the amulet of Kalar with one hand slowly tracing her finger kind of up the shape of, of the pyramid on either side of her sit uh, sit a jackal uh, they do actually look like they're in the seats too, like next to her. You know, just judging on how high up over the from your vantage point, right over the edge of this of this loge box. Each of them, all three of them, uh, si- clearly seem very in- invested in the story uh, of the play of what's going on. Like their eyes are, are fixed on it. In the box that would be further down, like the on your if you're looking at the stage on your right hand side the third most box along the outside of the perimeter you see in it is Isabella and next to her sits Kula it seems they're also taking in the show so sur- surrogate kind of ush- takes you and quickly ushers you to, bas- to uh, a seat in the last row just to the left basically of the entrance that you've you've walked in I will nudge Mia and point to Isabella and Kula I will nod. As you're being seated, uh, you see Isabella kind of leans over to Kula and clearly whispers something into his ear. Kula gives a, a slight nod and immediately gets up and leaves their balcony area, disappearing from sight. So, uh, yes, yeah, so again, surrogate kind of t- ushers you to your seats. Oh, please enjoy the show. And then we'll scurry out of out of the theater. On the stage, you see a a halfling woman with absurdly long pointed ears and and a bulbous nose. She stands on like a 15-foot balcony, part of the set that's built here, right? Clearly, she's she's wearing prosthetic features on her face. Um, And this balcony overlooks like a cluster of cardboard bushes arranged around the base of a cardboard tree. And uh, a human, a human man, uh, stands among this scenery. His, his head and, and arms and legs, they're, they're barely visible uh, as they protrude from this large square box he's wearing, like a suit. The sides of the box are, are painted like a bluish green, and, and they, look, they look slimy. And the woman on the balcony begins to speak. Uzio, o oh Uzio, wherefore art thou, Uzio? I standeth here, under thy oaken growth, with thy wisdom, sweet goblinette, peereth past my transparent nature. Thy form is riddled with rings and gold. Lovers pass, perchance, those knoweth of your embrace. Regretful does the past remaineth, fleeting is the moment as a single breath. Unknown is thy future, as the way the poplar groweth. The poplar groweth toward the sun, a certainty as certain as our nature's. But my nature, dear goblinette, is hateful to myself, because it is an enemy to thee. Had I but hands, I would choke it dead. My ears curleth at thy words. Thy nature attracts me like none other. Music filleth my heart and elicits a smile upon my face. A smile that shineth. With more points than any star. 
that words bring us together, yet everything else keeps us apart. That's the curse of a gelatinous life. That's the curse of sharing thou heart. I've cleaneth too many dungeons of fleshy debris, searching for my counterpart to spendeth their life with me. Now speaking of dungeons, those I was raised in. The Goblin King demandeth we pillage and commit sins. A life unfit for dreaming, those ambitions seeming. To hide your grasp with a goblin arm, to try could cause us harm. A caustic fear incideth us, a feeling I knoweth all too well. A goblin ant and an uzio, they say it could never be. Forgetteth all their rules and cries, for I only knoweth a single thing. I want you inside of me! Uzio. Oh, Uzio. <laughs> and the curtain Bravo. closes. Bravo. <laughs> encore, encore. <laughs> and the crowd gets their feet, yes, applauding. And you hear kind of a, a bell ring, signaling intermission of the play. Mia, quickly. Nah, I'm worried about Kula. Okay, yeah, let's go. That's it. End of the show. Thanks for listening. Before you go, I got a couple of things I want to tell you about. Uh, you can find the Encourageable Party all over the interwebs. You can just go to encourageableparty.com and you can find all the links there. While you're there, check out the Patreon. There's some really cool stuff you could do with the Patreon, like give inspiration to Shaft. Or you can waste it and give it to one of those other mooks. Even worse, you could give it to Leland. Also, you can get access to mini campaigns and other cool stuff that we do. You're automatically entered into all contests. I mean, it's, it's really a great deal. Uh, the Encourageable Party is sponsored by Critical Hit Design. All ambient sounds and music provided by TabletopAudio.com. Intro and outro music is by Josh Jarvis, and you can email him at jamesmercymusic at gmail.com if you need any music stuff. Okay, that's it. Now you can go. Happy adventuring! <laughs>